All right, guys, we are back at it with the fantasy football rankings. In this video, we are giving you the top five fantasy football wide receivers for 2023. Got the list pulled up here I've created. And again, I implore you guys, this is for entertainment purposes only. Anyone giving you rankings, especially consensus, consensus rankings, is lying to you. This is a practical list that I'm going to give you. As in the order, I would draft these wide receivers if they're on the board in the draft, okay? Everybody else is literally taking last year's top finishers and telling you to draft them again in that order, knowing full well, and this is the thing, knowing full well that these players are going to decline or potentially bust. Last year, Cooper Cup, pinnacle, astronomical year. And what did they tell you? Cooper Cup is the number one wide receiver. Last year, John Taylor, right? who's the consensus top number one player, number one running back. Why? Because the year before, he finished on top. So if you're new to the channel, guys, I do things differently here. I don't copy and paste. This is truthful, factual, and advice that actually helps you guys win. So make sure you guys do smash the thumbs up and secure the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it below. If you don't know what the 16-round draft solution is, experience it right now. Get it below. Use the code SMASH to save. You get sleepers, breakouts, optimal players draft each round in a video training with all the notes. So you get all the optimal players in each round to draft based on the current ADP so you know when to grab all these rookies ahead of time before they get sniped by the competition. You know where the sleepers are. You can grab them and you don't waste your time with mediocre picks of players that have had years to wow you you're not wowed. So all the optimal players omitting all of the Potential bus in 16 rounds. Everything there for you on a silver platter. Secure the solution. I've linked it or linked it below. Or head on over to thefantasyfootballcounts.com under programs and grab it. Use code SMASH, all right? And also drop a comment below. Are you going robust RB? Are you going early wide receiver? Are you going zero RB? Which wide receivers are you taking? Which wide receivers are you stacking in the early rounds? Let's talk about it. Which wide receiver do you love in the comments below? Love to get your feedback, all right? Now, Let's go from five all the way to one on my top five wide receivers. Starting with the first one here. Now, just because he's my number five doesn't mean you have to draft him as a top five pick. And I want to implore you guys. I want to emphasize this, okay? The first guy I'm talking about here is Garrett Wilson. I love the upside. love the ceiling. I got him at number five here because the ceiling is there. They brought in Aaron Rodgers. Last year, he was dealing with Zach Wilson and Mike White, okay? Nothing to get excited about at all. So when you look at a guy like Garrett Wilson, you look at a guy that's got a ton of ceiling. Now, last year, 147 targets, 83 receptions, still 1,000 yards, 1,103 yards receiving and only four touchdowns. That's definitely going to go up. This guy was a first-round pick, 10th overall, okay, last year. So going into his second year, finished 21st in fantasy points last year. I understand that's not very high, but again, he was dealing with Mike White, Joe Flacco, Believe it or not, Joe Flacco and Zach Wilson at quarterback gets a significant upgrade with Aaron Rodgers. You've probably seen videos already of these guys connecting. Love the talent, love the youth, love the upside. Now, where do you draft him? You draft him as a wide receiver one, potentially. If you don't go wide receiver round one, you get him in round two. He's a round two guy with that top five upside, okay? Now, there is a chance he busts. There is a, anything can happen in fantasy, right? You're, you're not really guaranteed here, but what you are guaranteed is a good connection potentially with Aaron Rodgers, potentially, right? I say that, you know, that term, you know, take that literally, right? Potentially good connection because we don't know, right? They haven't worked together, you know, in reality, right? In a, in a full season. So, you know, the upside is there. Draft him in the second round. After you've gone running back, <clears throat> he's a good option in the second round if you want to do that. If you want to fade wide receiver round one, you want to get a good wide receiver round two, he's a safe bet. Again, he's young, hungry Aaron Rodgers, okay? And again, he did well with a bunch of crappy quarterbacks. So love love him, okay? Number two, I'm on Ross St. Brown. Finished seventh last year in fantasy points. Got him here at number four for me. Again, working our way to the number one receiver that I like this year. I'm on Ross like as close to a guarantee secure wide receiver you can get. He was very consistent last year. Again, finished seventh in fantasy ports, 146 targets, 106 receptions, 1,161 yards, and about six touchdowns. Now, again, I'm expecting the touchdowns to go up a bit. Jameson Williams was supposed to come in this year and tear it up. He's dealing with a suspension. I guess he was betting on games or whatever he was doing. So when I look at a guy like Amon Ra, I look at the number one clear-cut wide receiver in a connection that is there with him and Goff. 
Love it. They've added Jamar Gibbs, who's going to be catching the ball out of the backfield. He's explosive in his own right. So defenses have to worry about the run game. They've got Montgomery. They've got Gibbs. They've got true running backs. It's going to be a very interesting offense this year, and an offense I'll be watching quite frequently. Again, with Amon Ra and Gibbs, loving the talent here on this team. But when you're looking at a safe wide receiver one to draft in round two, he's your guy. Okay, I feel totally safe picking up Amonra St. Brown, going running back, and then Amonra round two. I'm totally comfortable with that. Again, I, I really feel warm and fuzzy about Amonra this year. Now, I liked him last year when the Kinships to the consensus that everybody was sleeping on him. I was drafting him, right? And he wasn't a top five guy. Now they're jumping on the train, which is a little frustrating knowing that this was my guy last year and he one of my, you know, kind of sleeper kind of guys. And everyone now knows about him. So it is what it is. The cat's out of the bag. I'm on Russ State Brown, second round value. That's where you, you know, that's where you got to get him if you want him. Okay. Number three here, I was talking to Jimmy Maverick, who comes on the show here. You guys see him, Jimmy. And he doesn't like this guy too much. I still like him. And the guy I'm talking about is Stefan Diggs. He finished fourth last year in, in fantasy points. Now, I believe in Diggs and I believe in Josh Allen. Josh Allen is a quarterback I want to anchor in all my rosters this year because there's a lot of uncertainty at the quarterback position with all these rookies flooding in and quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers moving to new teams and people like Kyler Murray and, you know, Russell Wilson and question mark on how they're going to do this year based on last year's kind of flop type years with injuries and lack of performances. So I look at quarterbacks. I like Josh Allen and I was hearing somewhere, I don't know where I read it, that their time is running out, right? They've got an offense that could potentially win the Super Bowl here. Diggs is a very competitive guy, as you know, and the guy wants to win. Now, last year, 154 targets, 108 receptions, 1,400-plus yards. This is a guy that wants to win. This is a guy that likes to get fed the ball. And the only guy that was close to him in targets last year was Gabe, Gabe Davis, okay? Gabriel Davis, 93 targets, okay? Not really. It's close, but not really. 154 compared to 93. Stephon Diggs is the guy. Now, they're going to be implementing more of a passing game to their running backs with guys like James Cook there. There's rumor that Dalvin Cook ends up on the Bills. At the time of this recording, you know, James Cook is kind of the guy, but you know that <clears throat> Allen likes to run the ball himself, so I'm not really targeting any running backs on the Bills. But when you look at Diggs, again, you're looking at a solid wide receiver one. Again, you can get end of first round, early second to solidify on your roster. Again, I'm particularly probably fading wide receivers the first early rounds. There's a ton of depth at wide receiver, including a ton of rookies that could go off this year, including Quentin Johnson, who I really like as a sleeper. Now, I'm not making Quentin Johnson my wide receiver one. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is that there's a ton of depth at wide receiver. But I do, if you want a safe, secure uh, wide receiver earlier on, Stefan Diggs is the guy. There's a chance of regression. It's very obvious. But again, I really feel that the Bills need to make a run quickly if they want to have a chance to win a Super Bowl with the team that they currently have. Okay. Number two here. Now, everyone's got him number one. Now, I can't really predict injuries, but... The way Justin Jefferson finished last year, it's very unlikely he does it again. I said this with Cooper Cup. Now, it does happen a little more frequently. Like, if this was a running back, I'd say for sure, not drafting him. But because he's a wide receiver, and we've seen these trends, uh, you know, Antonio Brown for years had a run where he was consistent. A.J. Green had a couple good runs in the past. Julio Jones. Wide receivers tend to have better runs in fantasy staying near the top. And I think that's totally viable here with Justin Jefferson. I'm not going to take him out of the top five and just say he's going to get hurt like I did with Cooper Cup last year. But uh, Justin Jefferson, I think, because he's still young, right? He's still consistent. With Cooper Cup, he's had years to wow us. We weren't really wowed, had this astro- astronomical year. I knew a decline was coming. But with Justin Jefferson, you're getting that consistent wide receiver, right? Number one in targets last year. Number one in fantasy points. Number one in receptions with 128 receptions. A num- number one in receiving yards, 1,809, right? Wasn't number one in uh, touchdowns. He had eight, but still number one in fantasy points with 368 plus fantasy points. This is this is great stuff, right? The clear cut number one. Now they drafted Jordan Addison, who is a good wide receiver in his own right. I believe they drafted him in the first round. He's there, and that could only help Jefferson. I mean, some targets are definitely going that way. Barring any type of injury, which again, what goes up must come down. So injury is very viable. Hopefully he doesn't get injured, obviously. But an injury is very viable for a guy who's had a couple Cinderella years. So factor that in and understand that he's been high for quite a bit of time. And the probability and law of averages state that there's a chance of a decline. 
Personally, I am not going to be inv investing in Justin Jefferson because I don't like wide receiver early. And if I were, I'm going to go with my number one guy, which I'm going to state in a second. I'll tell you why. But Justin Jefferson for me is a total pass. But based on talent, youth, opportunity, and the fact that he can finish on top again and he should finish on top again, barring any type of injury, got him at number two. I'm personally not going to be drafting him. All right, coming in at number one here again, make sure you guys secure the 60 round draft so your rankings do not help you. But knowing the optimal players are drafted each round, sleepers, breakouts, all in one spot, printable cheat sheet, video training with mock drafts laid out for you on a silver platter. Get the 60 round draft so you use code SMASH. I've linked it below. That's going to help you guys win your leagues. All right, coming in at number one. Again, drop a comment below. Who do you like at number one? Who do you like at wide receiver? Are you going wide receiver early? Are you ten, Are you passing on wide receiver? Are you going running back, then getting a Garrett Wilson, a Mono round two? Let me know in the comments. Love to get your feedback. Coming in at number one here, for me, it's pretty easy. It's Jamar Chase. Last year, he had a hairline hip fracture, which sidelined him about four weeks. He missed around four to five weeks, kind of screwed him up for that time. In that time still, when he came back, in the time that he played, sorry, 12 games, still you know, performed well, you know, was a top four, top, what is he finish? 11th in PPR, 11th guys in PPR, a guy that only played 12 games. We're talking about a guy who had 134 targets, 87 receptions for 1,040 yards receiving and nine touchdowns. He still had one more touchdown than Jefferson in only 12 games. Okay. Going into his third season when he got Burrow with a, in a contract year, Burrow, I like a little bit better than I like Cousins, you know, Maybe I'm crazy, but I like the use of the upside of Burrow a little bit better here. Jamar Chase, like I said, finished through the top last year, only playing 12 games, super young. Burrow contract year, ultimate, you know, ultra dynamic player, come down with the ball strong, yards after catch are great, talent is great, red zone looks are great, everything knock on wood, barring any type of injury again, which you can't really predict, you know, is looking good. And he had his injury last year, so... I'm going to assume that, again, law of averages, you know, what goes down must come up. So I'm looking at him if there was a chart, you know, upward trends for Jamar Chase, slight downwards trends for Justin Jefferson. That's how I'm looking at this guy. So Jamar Chase at number one. Jamar Chase, number one. Jefferson, Diggs, Amonra, and Garrett Wilson at number five. Top five wide receivers for this year. Now, you're asking, where is Devontae Adams? And, again, I'm not going to say too much other than the fact that he's coming off a pinnacle Several years, and he gets a downgrade at quarterback. Not going to be investing in a wide receiver that's going to be with Jimmy Garoppolo. Bottom line. Now, Tyreek Hill could have made this list as well. I still have question marks about Tua's health. And Waddle's there. He's also a wide receiver one on paper. They're, you know, I've got my question marks as well there. Uh, A.G. Brown could have made this list. I still like A.G. Brown. I think Hurts and him. Maybe they have a Super Bowl hangover. Hurts and uh, Brown. But, you know, Brown could easily make this list ahead of Amon and Garrett and probably should be drafted ahead of those guys. But, you know, the other guys could supersede him this year on overall fantasy points. So those three guys, honorable mentions. Uh, if this was a top 10 list, they'd probably make it. Although I'm still fading Devontae Adams. Don't trust the quarterback. All right. Top five wide receivers. There's some wide receiver rankings for you for fantasy football 2023. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe and secure the solution. I'm out.